Hi, I'm Jamie Fraser, curator for the ancient Levant and Anatolia here at the British Museum. And welcome to my corner. One of the things that I find most extraordinary about working in the British Museum is that sometimes some of the smallest, seemingly most insignificant objects have the loudest, largest, most interesting stories. What I want to share with you now is the story behind one of the smallest objects that we've got on display in our current exhibition, Luxury and Power, Persia to Greece. This object is less than two centimetres high. It's a, an ancient gemstone that would have once fixed inside a swivel ring and it was made probably between 450 BC and 400 BC in the city of Athens in ancient Greece. What is amazing about it is that it's depicting a peacock. The peacock is front on, it's got its tail fanned out behind it and it's holding in its talons two snakes, one of which has a beard. Don't ask me why. Depictions of peacocks in ancient Athens are not that unusual, but it is unusual for being this early. Almost all of our images of peacocks come from the Hellenistic periods, particularly um, associated with a sanctuary to the goddess Hera on the island of Samos. And we know that the Samians, the inhabitants of these, this city on Samos, minted coins of the city with peacocks as its insignia. We have another object in the collection from this same period that is a bronze handle of a mirror case and it shows in repoussé, a technique of hitting the metal from behind into shape, a young woman feeding fruit to a peacock or a peahen with its tail down. But what's unique about this special gemstone is that because it's made in classical period Athens, 450 to 400 BC, give or take, it's the earliest depiction of peacocks that we have from Athens. And in fact, it's probably the earliest depiction of a peacock we have anywhere from Europe. Peacocks came originally from India. And to get all the way into Greece by about 450, 440 BC, they've come all the way through the Middle East that has been stitched together as part of this massive Achaemenid empire. And we know that the Achaemenid king, the ruling dynasty of this ancient Persian empire, created elaborate gardens known as Paradisos in some of his capital cities. And he stocked these gardens with exotic birds. The most exotic of which, of course, is the well-plumaged, beautiful, noisy peacock. So how on earth did a peacock become to inscribed with such delicacy on such a small gemstone? Well, in order to understand that question, we have to step back and look at the whole geopolitical landscape that's going on in Greece and the wider world at this time. In the second half of the 5th century BC, so 450 to 400 BC, Athens has just emerged from a 50-year-long conflict with the largest superpower the world had ever seen up to that point, which was ancient Persia. Athens emerged from these Greek-Persian wars as one of the wealthiest cities anywhere in the Mediterranean. Its wealth was generated in part from tribute paid by its subject allies as part of this coalition against the Persians. It was in part generated by a discovery of silver at Larium, about 50 kilometres away from Athens. It was in part by the spoil, the booty, that it was capturing off the battlefields against the Persian armies and the Persian navies. And it also came through its extremely efficient and elaborate network of trades with its maritime vessels. By the 440s and by the 430s, Athens is an extremely prosperous place. And to walk through the streets of Athens in the 440s BC is kind of to walk through the streets of Dubai about 10 years ago. Cranes everywhere, scaffolding everywhere, as the city was transforming and rebuilding itself after the Persian incursions. And this elevated Athenian citizens into levels of prosperity and levels of extravagance that they had never yet experienced. Now into that scenario, I want to introduce you to one particular Athenian statesman. His name was Pyrolampes. 
And Pyrolampes, he was a great mate of Pericles, who was the, sort of the main statesman at the time. And we know that Pyrolampes in the 440s BC was sent to represent Athens as an ambassador on several missions to the various courts in the Persian East. And we think that on one occasion, he returned to Athens with a gift that he had been given by the Persian king or one of his governors, which was a breeding pair of peacocks, or as the Athenians called them, the Persian bird. Probably the first peacocks ever to cross from the Middle East into Southeast Europe. Now, these were birds of empty vanity par excellence. They were there to be kept for their plumage and their strut and their preen and their sheen, but they had no practical application whatsoever. You couldn't eat them. One historian said that to eat a peacock would be one of the fastest ways to spend your money imaginable. They were noisy. They required a keeper. They required large, a large aviary or a large garden. One estimate said that the cost to keep a pair of peacocks over just a year was the same as to purchase two of the finest marble statues. <laughs> but this was their point, this empty vanity. We can see this being lampooned through the words of the Greek satirical playwright Aristophanes. And in his uh, play, The Arcanians, he spoke about an ambassador who returned from the Persian court. We don't know who, but he's probably lampooning Pyrolampes, that owner of the peacock farm. And he has a, an aged elderly man who's sitting on the streets, looking on, seeing this embassy emerge back from having spent time in Persia, complaining loudly at the luxuries they had to endure. We had to drink unwatered wine from crystal cups, he exclaims. The old man rolls his eyes. Oh, I am sick of these ambassadors with their peacocks and pretensions, he says. And it's a really interesting remark, pretensions, as well as being something for show. Because peacocks in ancient Athens were regarded as a luxury. And luxury was an extremely destabilizing influence. This was a democratic city that had emerged by placing codes to try and suppress social inequality in a new political system whereby every citizen had the same right to participate in decision making, assuming, of course, that they were Athenian-born adult men. To be wealthy was fine in this system, but to be ostentatious about your wealth was potentially dangerous. And it could potentially lead to charges that you were sympathizing with the Persian enemy and ultimately to ostracism from the city. And in this context, owning peacocks could be construed as dangerous. We know this from one extraordinary legal case that was brought against Pyrolampi's son, Demos, around about 415 BC. So Demos inherited these peacocks, which presumably had kept breeding as part of this peacock farm kept by his father in the city. And political enemies brought a prosecution case against him where the main worry, the main concern in this democratic city of Athens was that he was keeping something for the precious privilege for the few, that this was a luxury that hadn't been democratized. And of course, the defense counsel said, well, hang on a minute. It's really difficult to democratize a couple of birds. But you know what we've been doing? Every month on the, the day of the new moon, Demos would open his garden for a price for public admission so that anyone from the city could come and view these Persian birds. Luxury was OK. Peacocks were OK if they were made the preserve of the community rather than the preserve of a precious few. And we see in that story, I think, the deep 
neuroses that are developing in the psyche of ancient Athens at this time, where you have this newfound wealth confronting these new political ideals and shaking it around in ways that no one had really imagined. Because I think you see in this our own nervous cynicism about luxury that we've inherited from the classical period Greeks. Luxury for us is something to aspire to, something to covet. We want to drive the fancy car. And yet luxury is something that we're also deeply cynical about. We question its motives. We question its viability and its validity. And I think in that deeply uneasy attitude to luxury that we have today, we hear echoes. We hear the resonances of the uneasy relationship against luxury that the ancient Athenians had in the 5th century BC that have filtered down to us across the centuries to our own relationship with our Kardashians today. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Um, this gemstone is on display in an exhibition called Luxury and Power, Persia to Greece. It's running at the moment and will be running until the 13th of August 2023.